one of the things that I think um, is interesting about this ordinance process, so there's, there's a couple of different components to it. One is the one you just described, if it's complaint driven and there's somebody currently ha in, inhabiting the apartment. But uh, during the, typically the, in, the apartments are inspected during, or the homes are inspected uh, in the in-between time between rental uh, systems to meet the CFO. So if uh, an inspector goes in and conducts a CFO inspection that includes a, the, the lead inspection and determines that there is a hazard there, what's the process at that point? Well, that, that's internally, we have to issue a notice and order, which then is a form of communication, a legal form of communication that we put the owner on notice that there is a violation in that property. And based upon the verbiage within that notice in order it details to that owner what he or she must do in order to correct that violation. So with lead, lead is pretty easy as far as the instructions of what you need to do. And I think that's the simplicity and the uh, way that owners can understand it because, you know, in, in Rochester, we have a mixture of owners who have high and low uh, uh, abilities to understand what what it is that is being sent to them. So we wanted to make it as simple as possible so that no one would, you know, uh, misunderstand what is being asked of them to do. So the ordinance says you have to correct it using less safe work practices. We would prefer that anyone that corrects this paint be uh, RRP certified, and that's also in that verbiage. That's right, and, and painting, that's a sort of, yes. that's a federal certification. Absolutely, because then we know that you have the, the, the basic understanding of how to do it properly, how to do that cleanup, how to ensure that the materials that you're using, the products that you're using are going to really do something to remove that lead from that uh, surface if there is lead in that paint. So we, we, we make sure that all of those type of instructions are in there for anyone to know. Once that work has been corrected, then the owner has to get a private company to come out, which we supply a list to them. They can obviously choose whom they want, but we try to make it simple for them to get someone out there to react to it quicker. And these companies are vetted by our office to ensure that they're in compliance and not that what they're doing out there, they're not overlooking anything. And then once that uh, report shows that it's achieved compliance and they send that report in to be evaluated, evaluated and reviewed by our office uh, to accept it. And then one of the things that's also um, um, another layer of, of safety is that you, uh, your office also does in, uh, audits of those companies Absolutely. that are doing the third party inspections. So there's a really nice, you know, there's an ongoing evaluative component to all of this, so. And, and that's crucial. In fact, uh, as you know, we, we get many a calls from around the country from different, different municipalities uh, that wanna sort of imitate what Rochester does, you know, we, we've been, you know, tagged with the, the, the title of uh, the gold standard in the country when it comes to uh, this kind of process. And I, I think, you know, any, anyone can gain that title. I, if we're all doing the right thing, everyone should say that they have the gold standard when it comes to lead remediation, especially from childhood lead poisoning. So I, I don't really take that as seriously as a lot of people would, would say. I think we're doing the right thing. That's my point. Uh, well, so, and, and there's constant evaluation. There is. And so, that, you know, that, we. That allows you to be able to have a standard. Absolutely. And, and we, we are. We're looked at by everyone. We get constant audits from other you know, folks. Uh, the Center for Governmental Research comes out. Of course, you know, we're always kept on our tippy toes by the agencies that we're working with, the University of Rochester's Medical Center, like uh, uh, Kate was mentioning that she's from. So we, we, get, we get our own uh, look at, you know, by the State Department of Health, all of those agencies are involved. But going back to your question about the audits, we wanna make sure that everyone is following what we set in the lead ordinance. It just wasn't a 
document, and you know that, Elizabeth, from day one, it wasn't something that we just wanted to say we wanted to add another layer of enforcement on. That, that wasn't the point. It was the point to ensure that kids were uh, living in homes that were safe and healthy. And if we couldn't get to that point, then that ordinance meant nothing. So we wanna make sure that everybody realizes that whether you're a city employee or whether you're one of the private companies that has to go in the house and test, that you're following the same thing. And we have probably over the course of those years uh, suspended more than half of those companies at one time or another simply because they weren't following the prescription that we uh, uh, mandated in the ordinance. You know, and, and, you know, again, to sort of underscore your point about this idea of being proactive, right? I mean, so that all of the data, right? And that's one of the things, and I'll also go back to saying, you know, your, your community partners, including the Coalition to Prevent Lead Poisoning and including the County Health Department, all of your community partners, we all work together, but we'll be the first to call each other on the carpet <laughs> if, we, uh, if we think something needs to be addressed. And the beauty is at this point, you know, we all trust that we're going, that, you know, we are, we are really looking out for children and to try to make sure that we are keeping our community as safe as we can. And so, you know, we, we hold each other accountable. I mean, there's such a, there's so many different layers of accountability built into this process at this point. Um, it's, 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 it, and, and what's also interesting is that even at this point in the process, there still needs to be ongoing evaluation. There still needs to be ongoing evaluation. All of these different types of things of thinking about, you know, how does it work? What's the best way to make it work? Because